Hi, I'm Peter Birch and I'm here today in Queensland, that's right, beautiful, sunny, hot Queensland, here today to check out some absolute amazing blue tongues, that's right, I'm here with Joe Ball, the blue tongue king, welcome to Criticam. So we're here in the outdoor enclosure section, so let's talk about not only the spectacular animals, but the design of these enclosures specifically, Joe. I reckon it must be nearly 10 years ago that me and you were looking at my outdoor enclosures at my other place, which, um, which were my Mark 1 crack at getting this concept right. It's almost and, been like the, the, the foundation for the whole hobby to keep those these animals outside in those particular cages. I mean, I've, I've also stolen the design and changed little tweaks. And I see these are actually like, I guess, 2.0. Yeah, and, 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 and yeah, there's heaps of keepers that have had a crack at it. Yeah, w without hyping them up too much, I mean, obviously they're fantastic, but it, it's basically a rabbit hutch design, you know, so it's not it's not something from from outer space it's not it's not a, an out there concept but it's it's basically a rabbit hutch so you've got a back section and a front section with the original rabbit hutch design you know they were sat closer to the ground they were timber you've got different materials but what we've done here is we've evolved it you know you've got this this white reflective stuff here but it's also sandwich panels so that's got a rubber rubber insular property through it's the middle like of a it pollock uh, poly yeah, uh, material yeah. I use, you know, it's like you say, it's sandwiched. Believe it or not, it is close to 40 degrees here Celsius and inside the cages here, I mean these animals are cold to touch. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, a hot, 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 hot Because we know they're, they're going to go into that heat stress and start going frantic, but they're not hot yeah. at all to touch. Yeah, that's right. The next thing I use, I mean, there was some wire on some of the old, old cages, but the, this is wire all the way around. So not just the top, not just the sides, but it's also bottom, wire yeah. underneath. The idea of making them raised on that suspended wire idea was something I took from bird aviaries and it comes down to ease of management and also bacteria numbers. You've got your mulch here, which the blue tongue splint, their day basking, etc. And they can poop and pee on that. The rain can come down, wash it through. The UV rays can hit it. So you've essentially got this sort of clean substrate that's regulated by nature itself. Uh, you're never going to get to wet a situation because no. the water just runs through. Uh, and also with it being raised off the ground, it enables easier management. I mean, I'm, I'm getting close to 50 now. <laughs> well, I guess I'm 47 this year. I don't year, want to say but... anything, but I've crept a little bit further than <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, so. I'm not going to give myself away, but yeah, I'm getting there. And I, I don't want to bend that and all the way down no, here either. No. So yeah, it's, it's easy management in there too. So that's that part of it. I mean, like, like you said here, the, the fact that they poop out here, mother nature, basically flushes the poop out, the sun comes out. It's almost like you're cleaning and sterilizing or, or, or exactly like nature, motion. like nature meant to. Yeah, that's and, right. And you're evading all the problems with a reduction of moisture because we've got this air gap. So everything just falls out, just all of it yeah, disappears. Yeah, cyclical, constant. And you've got like air that. flowing through here. So like you say, they're always on a dry substrate, which is very important for these guys because they, they live close, to, well, they're on the ground, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. They yeah. live amongst the ground, all the leaf yeah, and stuff Yeah, terrestrial like animal and all that. So yeah. So I noticed the addition here, because Mark 1 or version 1 never had these little awnings. But like I said, it's cranking hot here, you've got full sun. And this, this thing here is, is quite warm to the touch, obviously. So you've got a bit of deflection from the heat as well as the sun, which also allows this guy down here to- Yeah, cool it's a cool box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, um, to do it more efficiently. This allows this to be a cool box. So, so this has got a secondary sort of purpose. I mean, in well, this area where you live, it's, you get- It's, it's multi-purpose. It's multi -purpose. And people would see that and go, oh yeah, that's not going to keep out all the sun. And yeah, no, it's not. It's not. But it's going to keep out that high midday vertical sun, which yep. is where we're at now. And that's your sun deluge. High range sun, these guys don't seek that. No. They seek low elevation morning sun, which when the sun rises, it's going to come in through here and these guys are out basking. Start poking into the yeah, air that's in. right. And then once she gets to, the, to its height, the sun is going to hit that and these guys have some refuge from it. Not only in this back section, this gives the secondary refuge. That is boiling hot. I mean, so, that's, so, that's, so where, where, where is that? Yeah, so as a reference here, which way is north? Uh, so the sun rises in the east. This is where the yep. north comes into it. Rises in the east, sets in the west, but sits lower in the northern that's sky right, yep. so in yeah, the winter. Low sort so, of so it shall come up there and then it will hit from there. So it's east facing, but, but you're also allowing the northern aspect in. Yep. And then when you get to the afternoon, yeah, where the sun is going down in the west, you're then offering some protection here. Yeah, I notice you've got this new awning on the back here. 
yeah. a new addition. If you want to hold that lizard, oh, yes. I'll show you how that works. So, so back up like that. So right. in, in winter, the afternoon sun has full range on the enclosures. And that's necessary, you know, because temperature gradients, you know, you're talking about some pretty cold temperatures. Yeah. Not so much here, but um, especially get down to you guys. Yeah, you want, you want all that yeah. afternoon sun oh, in there because sometimes lizards don't even warm up till lunchtime, yeah. you know? More importantly, for, for your absolute survival and your, your benefit of your lizards, you need to prevent the afternoon sun on days like today because it's reaching in days you know you're touching it's oh, 35 yeah. 36 today yeah, in the sun the being stinger. a ginger it's a stinger it's, well it's a stinger i'm not i'm not a ginger but, but you can I'm, see I'm on the gray side and my head's translucent you can I'm see me melting cooked on here yeah definitely and these guys yeah it may say 35 but in these cages if you're not giving it some protection you can soon be up to sort of 50 degrees i'm just going to pop these back in here so yeah. the albino goes over the other side oh, there. The other I side, mean, yeah. two magnificent examples of patless, I'm going to say. Yeah. So you got your patless albino, and this is uh, just a straight yeah. patless? Yeah, so that's same project. So that's patentless head albino. That's your, your base mutation there, and that's your patentless albino there. So Pretty amazing. Yeah. Woo! It's pretty warm out here. I think uh, we're going to use this excuse to get out of the crank and sun and eh? get into the shade. <laughs> so one of the other things, you've got these outdoor enclosures, but you've also got this big aviary, so it's the, the next level, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, these are my old goanna cages, and these are also three by three metres, and I used to have Australia's largest goannas in all these cages, and um, after a change of heart and decided that I wanted to step up my blue game, I thought, <laughs> why don't we use this big space for my favourite lizard, and that's the blue tongue. Yeah, this, and, um, this is going to be crazy because you don't even see zoos keeping blue tongues in these conditions, you know? Exactly right. These big enclosures and stuff. All right, Jeff. Like I said, it's a, it's a three by three metre cage, and um, my intention was to uh, try and breed centralian blue tongues. Mm. And I was always given the brief with centralians that you needed a, a large, dry space. Well, I think, um, I think you and, the brief. And yeah, and, and, and these aviaries are exactly that, you know. Yes, you can get a little bit of sideways rain that can come in, but essentially it's going to stay dry. Yep. And then obviously once you've got that space, you've got to, um, you've got to furnish it. Yeah. And you've got to try and tick a few boxes because you're going to get some hot days, you're going to get some cold days and so on and so forth. So um, hopefully under here, we're going to have some. No. Skunk. <laughs> let's, 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 keep, let's keep looking until we do. So we've got a few in here? Yeah, there's half a dozen in here. Yeah, so okay. that's, um, this is a favourite spot too. Okay. And there we, there we go. That's what we're looking for. Look at that. Gorgeous creature. Okay, so that's a nice big girl. She's just in sloth, just about to. So, oh, you're about me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy to buy it. You have a handle of I mean, th these are probably one of my favourite lizards. We, we did have quite a few of these back in the sort of early 90s there. In the Tiliqua range, they've got to be naturally. One of the most. The prettiest. One of yeah, the most fantastic. Yeah. I'd go that far, you know. Let's let's give this a quick brief overload here. So obviously we've got a bit of natural sunlight filtering in here. Yeah. Um, all this low shelter. material for shelter. filtering yeah, materials. We've got this big pile of rocks over here on a pallet. Now, this is probably something that's going to blow people's minds. Why the pallet number one, and why are we packed with a lot of rocks in here? Is it just because we're lazy and we well, it's the barbecue, or is it? It's just more to it? two words. It's thermal gradient, yeah. isn't it? And, and, that, and that's that. I'm leaning on the rocks right here. Yeah. yeah. That that's a giant heat bank. Yeah. Because so in the winter, the that's going to retain lots and lots of heat. You got the sun still, the afternoon sun coming yep. in and, and doing that, and then also at the same time, you've got refuge under there. Yep. You know, and you don't have to pile up rocks to the point where you can't access the animals. Yep. That's the other big kicker. If I want to, I can, I can grab animals quite easily and I can find everything that's yep. in here. I'm sure that if we look... You'd find someone hiding most of this, yeah? We might not, because this is... It's a bit on the warm side, isn't it? It is on the warm side today. Can't see anyone so down maybe there. not. It is a 35, 36 degree. You're probably over yeah, hiding under this. Under, under this lot. But yeah, that's the concept with that, you know? Yeah, look at that. There you go. Ah, uh, there we go, all in the one spot. Yeah, big pile of yeah. And I mean, look, here's a bit of natural variety, but like you say, I think they're the, probably the most beautiful natural form lizard that we have. Absolute gorgeous. I mean, look at that tongue. It's like a cheeky little tongue flicker going on there. Gorgeous little things. 
Now, I guess the real kicker is, how did you go? Well, it's my first year of having these guys up to up to size. There's three girls and uh, two boys, and we've got one litter, so. So we're a step closer. We're a step closer, and and look, if you, if you were to match that to some of my other blue tongue results, you'd say that's probably not that great, but. I think it's the, 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 amount, the amount of guys that have a go at these. That's it. That was uh, the next one is how yeah. many people have these and haven't cracked them. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. But also let's, you know, let's put me on the spot. Let's see how it goes next year. You know, let's back this up as well. Yeah, well, let's see it. But the cage, just to get, well, look at him, he's about to have a mug yeah. on my toe. Um, <laughs> let's get back to the cage. The idea, in reality, as with any cage, it's about getting that variation. Yeah. I mean, Yes, we couldn't find any here today. They were all there, but that happens to be the perfect spot today that's because of our hardness. That's right. You know, on another day, you'll find them all over here. On another day, you'll find them all over here. Whereas, you know, when you start keeping them in, in cages a quarter of the size and even less in yep. some instances, you know, how much choice are you actually giving these guys, you know? And, and I'm glad you touched on that choice. I mean, look, there's more than one piece of bark, more than one opportunity to you know, have refuge in here. There's so many different options, and like we said, there was one over there. Everyone else but, chose here. But yeah, all of them That's right. chose that one spot. Yeah. But, but you've given them the choice. Yeah. And like yeah. you say, when we put them in cages, sometimes we, we limit their choices down to one or maybe two options. Absolutely. Whereas we can see that there's multiple options here, and even with the multiple options, they have the opportunity to choose. Yeah, and that's, that's right. That's one of the most important things I think about keeping. keeping I mean, you can think what you want. You can go, oh, I think that it will like it. That's right. That's it's fine. And that's up to but, the animals. But, but in this case, you've gone, okay, there's six or seven choices. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've done exactly that. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show with Joe, the Blue Tongue King. And I mean, rightly so. Look at this magnificent creature, one of Joe's amazing creations. Well, if you guys aren't following, make sure you do. Make sure you hit him up. Thanks so much for watching Critter Again. Until next week, guys. Thanks for watching.